Hello everyone, this is Chandrasekhar welcoming you all to the series Concept Capsule. In this series, in this episode, we are going to talk about the unique method of calculating the hydrostatic force in a plane surface that is by using the pressure phrase. So before I start my session, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Chandrasekhar, mechanical engineering graduate from IIT Delhi and also an engineering services examination qualified with more than 10 years of teaching IES and SU. And you can all uh, contact me through the mail ID which is there on the screen and also you can join me on the telegram group that is mechanical by Chandrasekhar and the link is mentioned over here. So let us start talking about the pressure prism. The topic or the concept of pressure prism is most suitable for the surfaces with constant width, which are having constant width. Like the surface is in the form of a rectangle or a square. Rectangle or a square. How to, uh, the width is let us say B. The rectangle is having the width let us say B, which is constant throughout. So how to analyze it by using the pressure prism? Look, so there is a vertical plane surface having the height capital H, the height of the surface is capital H and the width of the surface is capital B. And this is the free surface equation, the free surface. So we need to draw the pressure diagram. How? The pressure at the top is equal to zero. The pressure is equal to zero. The gauge pressure is equal to zero. And the pressure linearly increases with depth. So there is a linear increase of pressure with depth and the pressure at the bottom will be rho of fluid. The fluid density is rho f. Rho f is the density of the fluid into G capital H. That is the pressure at the depth, at the bottom. So this is and the pressure is, pressure force is always normal and compressive. This is called as pressure free. This is known as the pressure free. All right. So. So we can we can find out the hydrostatic force acting on this vertical plate by the fluid by using the pressure prism. The depth of the pressure prism can be called as the depth of the pressure prism is equal to width of the surface. The width of the surface is the depth of the pressure prism. So the pressure prism is actually like this. This is how the pressure phase will look like. What we can do is we can find out the volume of the pressure prism. If we find out the volume of the pressure phase, that will give the hydrostatic force. That is the volume of it is a three-dimensional figure. Volume of the pressure prism will be equal to the hydrostatic force acting on this plane surface. What is the volume? Volume is half into base. Base is equal to rho f into g into h, that is the base, and the height will be equal to capital H, that is the area into B, that will give the hydrostatic force. And also, the line of action of this hydrostatic force, hydrostatic force, will pass through through the centroid of the pressure prism to the centroid C of pressure prism. So we can we can find out the hydrostatic force as well as we can find out the point of application of this hydrostatic force. The point of application will pass to the centroid of the pressure prism. If we find out the pressure prism in the is in the form of a triangle, so the centroid of this triangle C will be at a depth, will be at a depth of 2h by 3 from the free surface, isn't it? This depth is 2h by 3, isn't it? 2h by 3, and the, from the bottom it will be h by 3. We can say the depth of central pressure from the free surface is 2h by 3. That is called as depth of central pressure. Central pressure is the point, P is the point where the hydrostatic force is supposed to be acting. That is the depth of central pressure. That is how we can 
find out the hydrostatic force and its point of application by using the pressure fields. It is more effective, the method is more important when there are multiple fields. For an example, there is a plane surface again having the width B, but it is immersed in two fields. One is row 1, another is row 2, and row 2 is more than row 1. If we draw the pressure freeze, pressure at the top will be equal to 0, and pressure linearly increases with depth. Let me call this H1. H1 depth is into the fluid. The height H1 is into the fluid row 1, and the height of the plane surface H2 is the fluid row 2. So if we draw the pressure freeze, the pressure linearly increases with depth. So this point will have the pressure row 1 into G H1. And the bottom will have the pressure rho 1 g h1 plus rho 2 g h2 t. This is the pressure freeze. You can say this complete figure will be the pressure freeze. Now pressure linearly increases. This is the pressure freeze. So if we divide into three figures, 1, 2 and 3, we can say this width will be equal to rho 2 into g into h. Sorry, this will be. will be rho 1 g h1 this is rho 1 into g into h1 and this will be rho 2 g h2 rho 2 g into h2 isn't it are you able to see it so i have i have divided the whole pressure prism into three figures and the depth of the pressure prism is nothing but the width of the the depth is equal to it the hydrostatic force the total hydrostatic force will be equal to F1 plus F2 plus F3. There are three pressure freeze. This is one, this is two. Where F1, if we want to write F1, that is the volume of the pressure freeze one. What is the volume? It is a triangle. So half into base, that is rho 1 into G into H1, into height, that is H1, into B, this is the depth. And what about F2 or the triangle rectangle? So it is rho 1 G H1, that is the base, into height is H2. Now, into depth is B and what about F3? Again, there is a triangle. So again, it will be half into base. What is base? Base is now rho to G H2, that is the base. Into height is H2, that is the area multiplied by B. That is how we can find out. Put these values in the above expression. We will get the total hydrostatic force acting on the surface by the immiscible fluids rho 1 and rho 2. Also, we can find out the point point of application of this hydrostatic force. How? By equating moment about the free surface. Equate moment about free surface. This is the free surface we are talking about. The free surface. If we equate the moment, so we can say F total, we have calculated into H is equal to F1 into H1 plus F2 into H2 plus F3 into H3. The total moment is sum of individual moments. We need to find out this H. F1 we already know, F2 we already know, F3 we already know. This is 1. This figure is 2. This is 3. There are 3 figures. If we want to find out H, so here we need H1, H2 and H3. What is H1? H1 is the depth of centroid C1. Depth of the centroid C1 from the free surface. This is H1. Do you agree H1 is equal to, this is a capital H1. So do you agree H1 is 2 by 3 H1. What is H2? H2 is the depth of centroid C2 from the free surface. H2 will be equal to H1 plus H2 by 2. This is a capital H2. And small h3 will be the depth of centroid this is let us say c3 c3 is the centroid of the pressure prism corresponding pressure prism h3 will be equal to h1 plus it will be 2 by 3 we put the value of h1 h2 h3 here we can find out the value of h that is the depth of cp from free surface of the liquid from free that is how we or multiple fluid. I hope it is clear. When the surface is inclined, then also we can width of the surface is let us say B. Width should be constant, otherwise you will not be able to find out the volume. 
let us say this is at a depth x1 this point is at a depth x2 and this is h and the width is b which is into the plane of the body so the force this is the free surface the pressure is equal to zero if i ask you pressure at point a what will be the pressure at point a the pressure at point a the pressure force will be normal and compressive it will be if density is rho rho f it is rho f into g into x1 isn't it x1 is the depth what is the pressure at b pressure increases linearly with depth so it is rho f into g into x2 x2 is the depth and it will increase linearly so this is known as pressure field this is called as pressure field it is not a rectangle now it is a trapezium pressure field and the width of the trapezium is into the plane of the board and the value of so we can say this is how it is a three dimensional so width of the surface is equal to depth of pressure field if you want to find out force that is the volume of the pressure prism the volume is area of the trapezium into depth so half into sum of parallel sides what are the parallel sides rho f into g into x1 plus rho f into g into x2 these are the parallel sides into height that is capital h multiplied by depth is that is the hydrostatic force and for a trapezium if we can find out the centroid of the trapezium how to find out the centroid of the trapezium if there is a trapezium of dimension a b and height h then the centroid of the trapezium can be calculated is the centroid this is the height of the centroid so it is h by 3 to 2a plus b on a we can find out a is equal to rho rho g x1 b is equal to rho g x2 and h is the height of the trapezium can easily find out this if we can find out this we can find out this isn't it that is how we can find out the depth this is where the hydrostatic force this is cp centro we can find out the depth of this centro that is how it works if we apply the same concept in this question the question says a hinged gate it is hinged at o of length 5 meter is inclined at 30 degree with a horizontal this angle is 30 and with water mass on its left this is water the fluid is water is shown in figure the minimum mass of the gate per unit width width is 1 unity width is equal to unit per unit width of the gate required to keep it closed so we need to equate the moment about o and put it as zero for equilibrium cause it is hinged So there are two forces which are developing the moment about o one is the weight which is, which is acting at center center of gravity the direction is mg downward we can find out this is the perpendicular distance so mg is giving the clockwise moment and the hydrostatic force will be giving the anti clockwise moment and to calculate the hydrostatic force we require the pressure prism if i draw the pressure prism to find out the hydrostatic force then the pressure at the top will be equal to zero the pressure at the top will be zero this is the free surface and pressure will keep on increasing so pressure prism will be like this this is how the pressure prism will look like how the pressure prism here it will be rho of water into g into how much is the depth it will be will be the depth from the free surface so rho into g into 5 sin 30 isn't it 5 sin 30 that is 5 sin 30 so it is a triangle pressure prism is a triangle and if we find its centroid we can find out the depth of center of pressure right so if i write the moment equation sigma m about o that will give m into g into mg is acting like this and the perpendicular distance will be this this is 5 by 2 this is 5 by 2 5 by 2 into cos 30 cos 30 is equal to if you want to write the force by using the pressure prism the force will be equal to half of base that is rho water into g into h that is 5 what is that 
that is 5 sin 30 into height height is height of that uh, figure is equal to 5 into 1 1 is the depth into the centroid into the depth of centroid or the or we need to find out the point of application of this hydrostatic force we need to find out the point of application of this hydrostatic force and because it is a triangle then the depth of this centroid will be 2 into 5 by 3 so it will be 2 by 3 5 that is the perpendicular distance this is how the hydrostatic force acts and this will be the perpendicular this is the expression g and g are getting cancelled out with each other 2 and 2 are also getting cancelled out with them 5 and 5 are also getting cancelled out now we are left with m into under root 3 by 2 cos 30 is root 3 by 2 is equal to 1000 into what is sin 30 1 by 2 to 5 n by 2. is 2 and 2 also getting cancelled out m is equal to m will be equal to 1000 to 50 upon 3 root 3 kg that will be the answer it is around the answer will be around 5000 uh, 9623 kg the answer will be around 962 are you guys getting 9623 or no answer will be around 9623 kg 3050 divided by 3 9622.962. So option C, option D will be the correct answer. All right. So guys, that is all from my side for this episode. I will bring more such beautiful concepts in the next session. Thank you guys. Thank you very much.